It's not uncommon for movies with near identical plots to be released every once in a while, but it's always a little strange when they're released in the same year. Sometimes both movies do relatively well at the box office. Other times, one film completely buries the other. It all comes down to what the audience responds to more. Today's video is talking about those movies with similar plots that came out around the same time. Let's get started. Modern day action movies love to describe themselves as die hard in a blank. Die hard in a plane, die hard in a mall, die hard at your in-laws house on Thanksgiving, etc. But in 2013, we got two very specific die hard inspired action films with Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down, which are both essentially die hard in the White House. Although both of these movies deal with a terrorist attack on the White House in an attempt to kill the president and the lone hero who has to save the day, their tones were pretty different. White House Down starred Channing Tatum as a Secret Service hopeful candidate and Jamie Foxx as the president. It was definitely lighter in tone and was played more for laughs than a serious action movie. Olympus Has Fallen starred the no-nonsense Gerard Butler and Aaron Eckert as the president, and it's the kind of bloody, adrenaline-fueled, bone-crunching action you'd expect from a Gerard Butler action movie. It's kind of funny how Olympus Has Fallen technically made less money at the box office than White House Down, but because the budget was lower, Olympus Has Fallen was the more profitable movie and sparked an entire trilogy of films. In 2011, two romantic comedies were released, centering around the idea of friends hooking up casually and then catching all those pesky feelings they were trying to avoid. The first one was No Strings Attached, and it starred Natalie Portman and Ashton Kutcher. The second one was Friends with Benefits, and starred Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake. And if you have a problem telling which film was which, don't worry, you're not alone. It's basically the exact same thing. And it also sort of feels like the exact same people went to watch these two movies, as both of them made about $150 million at the box office. But since Friends with Benefits was released in January, and No Strings Attached was released in July, I'd have to say that Friends with Benefits is the winner here, because it's sometimes hard to turn a profit in January. And if you judge by other things like Rotten Tomatoes score, then Friends with Benefits was the overall winner, with a 69% rating compared to No Strings Attached's 49% score. Both Pixar's A Bug's Life and DreamWorks' Ants were released in the same year, but although both movies center around an oddball ant who goes against the hive mind to think for himself and embark on a wacky adventure, the movies feel very totally different from one another. A Bug's Life is a Pixar movie, which means it's lighthearted, fun, and delivers a good, heartfelt message at the end. Ants is a little more adult, dealing with things like a brutal war between termites and a plan to drown all the ants that are loyal to the queen. You watch Ants now and you'd be surprised by its language language and its subject matter. Unfortunately, at that time, it was hard to compare to Pixar's animation style. While A Bug's Life effects still hold up pretty well even today, Ants is a little tougher to look at. Snow White is arguably one of the most well-known characters in pop culture, and that's led to a lot of different adaptations about her. There's a tendency nowadays to give classic fairy tales a bit of a twist in order to provide a fresh take on the subject material, but the real surprising thing is how two Snow White movies were released in the same year, both providing a unique spin on the original character. March 30th, 2012 saw the release of Mirror Mirror which is a more classic adaption of the fairy tale with Lily Collins playing Snow White and Julia Roberts playing the Evil Queen. Two months later, saw the darker Snow White and the Huntsman film get released in theaters, which pitted Kristen Stewart's Snow White against Charlize Theron's Evil Queen, with Chris Hemsworth's Huntsman thrown in there as well. Although they both tell essentially the same story, Snow White and the Huntsman was a lot grittier, and I guess that was something audiences responded to. Although both films received mixed reviews, Snow White and the Huntsman made almost 400 million at the box office, while Mirror Mirror only managed to score 183 million. In the summer of 1998, Deep Impact was released, and just a few months later, Armageddon was released. And looking at the box office returns, it's clear which one reigned supreme. Armageddon became the highest grossing film of 1998 even though it received mostly negative reviews and was criticized for the scientific inaccuracies and general plot. What? You're saying it's easier to train deep core drillers to be astronauts than it is to train astronauts to be deep core drillers? Sure, Michael Bay, whatever you say. I think both movies are just pure popcorn fun, and if you're ever in the mood for a double feature, this is the pairing to go with. 
Since both movies have a pretty similar plot, the question becomes which has the better cast? On one side, you got Robert Duvall, Elijah Wood, Tia Leone, and Morgan Freeman in Deep Impact. And on the other side, you got Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Thornton, Ben Affleck, Steve Buscemi, Liv Tyler, and Peter Stormare. Hmm, that's a tough lineup, but I gotta give it to Armageddon. What can I say? When I watch that movie, I just can't look away. It's almost like I don't want to miss a thing. Huh? Get it? Get it? Two similar volcano movies were released in 1997, and both saw groups of people trying to survive and fight against a massive volcanic eruption. The first one was released in February of 97, called Dante's Peak. It starred Pierce Brosnan and Linda Hamilton, and followed the inhabitants of a fictional town trying to survive a volcanic eruption. The other film had a much simpler title, it's just called Volcano, starring Tommy Lee Jones, and it was released in April. Now, the two plots aren't exactly the same here, but the fact that they both are volcano movies and were released around the same time, it always makes them easy to compare. In the end, Dante's Peak proved to have a much hotter lava flow and grow close to 180 million compared to Volcano's 122 million. In 1989, there were two films that saw police officers team up with a dog in order to fight crime. The first was Canine, which starred Jim Belushi as the angry police detective Michael Dooley. Instead of taking a partner, Dooley decides to get a police dog, a German Shepherd named Jerry Lee. And from there, shenanigans ensue. And then, just a few months later, we got Turner and Hooch, starring Tom Hanks as a police investigator who's forced to take in a troublesome dog who's the only witness to a horrible crime. And from there, shenanigans ensue. Obviously, a lot of the humor from these two movies stems from the destructive and reckless behaviors of its titular canines. So if you're into dog jokes, then you'll probably find something to like in one, if not both, of these movies. In the end, neither were huge breakout critical or commercial hits, so I guess it depends on which leading man you like more. And no offense to Jim Belushi, but Tom Hanks is just a national treasure. So I say Turner and Hooch over Canine. Alright, although it may seem like Despicable Me and Megamind are two different films, if you actually look at their plots, you'll see that they're not that different. And they came out in the exact same year. Both films centered around a big-time supervillain with a unique way of speaking who slowly learns to be the hero of the story and eventually saves the day. And don't forget that Gru from Despicable Me has his minions, while Megamind also has a number one sidekick named Minion. The proof is right there, people! So which one won in the end? The Steve Carell-centered Despicable Me or the Will Ferrell-focused Megamind? Well, even though they're both really good movies, Despicable Me made a lot more the box office and went on to spawn a highly successful franchise and spin-off movies, focusing on the Minions. Which I think is a little unfair because Minion from Megamind totally deserves a spin-off movie too. Alright, this is a very serious question. How do you like your mall cops? Do you like them raunchy, vulgar, and brutal? Or do you like them funny and sweet? That's the question moviegoers had to ask themselves back in 2009 when Kevin James's Paul Blart Mall Cop was released in the same year as Seth Rogen's Observe and Report. Both starred the actors as mall cops with dreams of doing something more with their lives. And although their plots were similar, they clearly were different movies. Observe and Report is a hard R-rated film with plenty of bone-crunching action and crude humor you'd expect from Seth Rogen at that time in his career. Paul Blart Mall Cop was a more family-friendly comedy that you won't be uncomfortable watching with your parents. Although Paul Blart was the worst-reviewed movie amongst the two of them, Paul Blart went on to earn $183 million at the box office, while Observe and report only managed 27 million. You win this time, Paul Blart. Although Christopher Nolan's The Prestige is still remembered and talked about today, that wasn't the only 2006 film that focused on a 19th century magician. While The Prestige starred Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale as two rival magicians trying to outdo one another with better tricks, Edward Norton starred in The Illusionist as a 19th century magician struggling with his own problems. And even though The Prestige might be more well known, it's worth noting that box office wise, The Prestige only made about 20 million more than The Illusionist and they hold an almost identical Rotten Tomatoes score. Coincidentally, both films were also nominated for Best Cinematography at the Oscars that year, so the Academy was really digging 19th century magicians at that time. Which movies on today's list were your favorites? Any others that we missed? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more awesome Screen Rant content like this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.